3.23 on EPTU has two new patches this week and is no longer under NDA because Wave 1 is allowed. This is a Wave 1 coverage of 3.23 EPTU. Now, I wanted to show you a failed attempt at getting to a distribution center in the middle of the night, right next to Lorville first, before I show you the good one. This is why you don't go right on top of a distro center. The place has an inordinate amount of turrets surrounding it and also on top of it and like around the edges of the industrial sections. They also have little towers as well. I'm going to show you in a minute. And they have missile launchers. When you fly over even a Grey Cat one, the place has got more damage potential, it looks like, than a Javelin, like or at least an NPC one. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so I guess we'll see if that gets tuned or whatnot. But the moral of the story is park a distance away and drive in. I would recommend at least two to three kilometers. Now, I took a longer route. Um, so I went in uh, about six kilometers away from the exact same location. This time it's in daytime. Uh, this is the one that's like about 140 to five kilometers away from Lauraville. This is the uh, Grey Cat Industrial Distribution Center. These places are massive. Uh, and it's like even the, the area around it. Um, I'm noting here that the SCM is in guns now, which is master modes. When I hit the B key, it switches between the different versions. And uh, basically when you go into gun mode, it turns your shields back on. So your shields have to slowly recharge back up to full, um, which is a little difference right now. I'll be honest with you, my first takes on master modes inside the PU is that they're not really ready for prime time, and I think they're not a good idea to run, especially on larger ships, uh, because uh, it's very clunky, takes time to switch between the modes, uh, it seems to be extremely geared towards fighter metas, like trying to make the fighter craft work against each other, or fight, slow the fights down on them. But it's actually slowed the entire game down on much bigger ships. And the fact that you have to turn your shields off to enter the SCM travel mechanism is just... Uh, it's not a great idea. But anyway, when you switch over to guns, you go slower and you gain your shields back, which is kind of useful when you have six gazillion turrets mounted to the top of a gray cat industrial facility at least it's what i think it is it's also listed on the uh, map on its placeholder is grin one i think it is and it has its beacon you can visit it there's an mpc vanguard i later find out that that's a vanguard the ll-165 number uh that's parked over there and uh, funny enough i think in these clips would just lock me up as a c1 so a little uh, MP uh, player C1 showed up and uh, proceeds to have six gazillion missiles thrown at it in a second, which I thought was kind of funny. So I'm going to leave that in. So after playing some uh, Prancer games here, finally found out that this uh, player C1 was not trying to troll me or shoot me or anything like that. And uh, they were also interested in checking out the distro center. So, uh, yeah. They decided to get a little closer, and you can see the missiles uh, giving them a greeting party. By the way, that's the new the UI uh, for 3.23 is is changed significantly for a lot of things. Missiles look like <laughs> like flying radioactive symbols now that are like spinning. Um, I guess that helps people track them more. Uh, out of all the UI changes, that is one I don't think I'm really going to get used to. I, I hope I can turn it back to the old mechanism, the old just simple triangle. I understand missiles are a threat and they're dangerous and whatever, but it's just a little overkill, especially when, like you've seen, like a whole bunch of missiles are in the air at the same time. It can really uh, mess with your uh, UI. But... Nevertheless, uh, our friend took some licks and decided to uh, <laughs> vacate the premises. So I decided to land a significant distance away, and I also did not think to bring a vehicle. I should have stopped at Lorville's entrance gate, spawned a Lynx rover, probably would have been perfect for this, or my Ursa, and kind of went in from here. But uh, yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. But... 
what I did gain was uh, basically I created myself a, I just didn't know it yet, a, a fallout experience of traveling between towns before you unlock fast travel. Uh, if you know, if you know, you know. So uh, the first things first, uh, Lorville is doing its typical uh, high winds and you have to block your face. So I had to constantly carry a med gun out uh, in order to stop it from blocking my face. But when I did get to the turrets, this is a while after. This is pretty damn cool. I'm going to stop talking for a second. So these are the turrets designed to uh, intercept you, and they are a rather distance away. They're about 2 kilometers to 1.5 kilometers. There's like a big ring of them surrounding the distribution center. There's more than you think. There's another one over there, for example. I had my Coda pistol out. I was concerned there might be some guards around the guard tower, around the guard towers. There's another one to, your, to my left, um, and um, did not be the case. <sighs> um... And by the way, the fauna is absolutely amazing. So this, uh, these new trees and the plants and everything and how they're all integrated in. We're not even into Vulcan yet. So there is a way to unlock Vulcan, I've heard, through the rumor mill. But um, I did not try it on this. This is just running stock, uh, the, the video. Now, when you actually get to the distribution site... Once again, it is geared very well towards ground vehicles, but once you get inside, there are like kind of roadblocks blocking your progression. You can note here that they're trying to show you that there's cargo security, refining, shipping, and the landing pads. The landing pads are off to the side. Here it comes in as it's, uh, if you want to grab a screen grab, now's the time because it finally updated to its high res. But um, I want to note that the landing pads are uh, pretty heavily protected when the NPCs wake up. You'll see why, what I mean about that in a minute. The, it was only like four to five server FPS or maybe even six, kind of bouncing around. Um, it, they weren't doing that hot in this run. But to be fair, this once again is EPTU, very early build. That's the point. Wave one, not under NDA. I don't know why, but it seems like when I make these videos, about at least two comments come up. Like, well, well, isn't this under uh, something? No, it's not. Uh, so uh, the uh, main message here about distribution centers is if you're not invited, they will fight you. And it, it, coming up, you'll see like there's four soldiers there, like security personnel. Even the technicians that are running around, most of them have pistols on their side. They have a sidearm, which is kind of <laughs> kind of overkill. There are these like loot pockets here, like this right here when I go inside you'll see that there's a bunch of long arms in here and short runs. But even there, there's a guard saying they're like, oh, I should check that out. <laughs> but a lot of kiosks that do nothing, I think they'll operate those doors in the future. So if you want to get your ground vehicle in, you'll have to fight your way into these security centers, then open the doors um, to get it a little further in. Like, say, a Nursa, for example, if that comes out, that would be pretty awesome. If you had a medical Ursa, that would be prime for this type of work especially with a small squad of say two or three folks one person running the nursa anyway here's the log arms here just hanging out <laughs> on the new uh equip keys this wheel system is not ideal for fps i thought it would be but so far in its current iteration it ain't great like it helps you pick it out very easily and quickly but like for these type of interactions and for interactions with a lot of there's a lot of op there's a lot of use items like a bunch of f's all over the place where you can just you have to pick one it's great but when you're trying to quickly grab a gun off the ground it hinders you like you can't hot swap guns like the old days like pick one off an npc because you're out of ammo type of thing it like brings up you have to do the circle and you have to like go through it and everything as the NPCs wake up when there's low server FPS, at least at this distro center, it's just so big, they start coming in from every direction like ants. And they kind of each get like, it feels like only a few can get server processing at a time when it's this low server FPS. And you kind of you kind of have to take them out before they before they can take you out type of thing, before they wake up. Like right here, I take 
I take a, a second th level three injury from those two who just have pistols as I'm exploring that little internal barge thing with the crane. This is like one of the main areas inside the distro center. There's like, um, there's a few different locations in here. So we covered the landing pads a little bit, although I didn't show them yet. You'll see them later. Uh, there's like these cargo docks, I'll call them, but like they're for ground vehicles to kind of ride in and pick up things. You can bring in a ground vehicle that far, but you can't get a ground vehicle in here. Um, additionally, this is kind of back to those cargo dock areas, I'll call them, where this is like you can drive in, you can poke your vehicle into the actual buildings and go inside, but only so far. And then those main halls you just saw me exploring, um, those are very dangerous. So, um, you know, my two level three injuries you see that are that I can't just heal with a pyramid off off the top. Those were caused when I went into that long, that long hall. It's surrounded on all sides by these sub hall things where just NPCs can just stream in from every direction. And when, you know, you get one of those server FPS locked at 30 type days or 15 or something days, it's going to be terrifying in there. Like it's going to make bunkers look like a joke. Um there's just so many enemies and um honestly when they wake up it's very random but yeah and the f when you get a good server it's gonna be terrifying to run these you're gonna need a group uh i took advantage of every little trick i could to just kind of get around quickly to kind of just fast scout this place it's not me showing you like every little facet of the place in fact as i understand it there is offices um, I don't know if I show it in the video, but I got to an elevator where it was clear that like they took, there was a, literally an NPC standing in the elevator, security guard. I took him down and then I tried to operate the elevator to go up to what I believe is the offices that were shown in some of the previews in the ISC a few weeks ago. I think it was um, the last distribution center one. See, these are the landing pads, by the way. I'm looking at them from the outside. They're not exactly accessible from out down here, though. Uh, so... And you'll see the Vanguard. But the offices, I'm not sure if you can get up to them. Uh, I'm sure some crazy player braved all those turrets and all those missiles and whatever else. And he was able to land or maybe get dropped off and the ship got blown up. Who knows? But I wasn't able to. Um, it seems like the elevator is purposely disabled that leads up to the offices. Um, it could also be that if you're invited to this location, I could be overthinking this. Like you just get invited, you accept a contract if you have enough reputation with, with Grey Cat or whatever company you're running for, um, then uh, you can just land on top and you get to visit the offices. But uh, that's the one section I did not cover. You can see the landing pads are defended. They are set up. They are kind of secured from the ins inside. In order to get to these these ships, if you were going to try to take one, you would need to come from the inside of go p through the check gate through the what I call the cargo docks. Is something they're they're firing more turrets and another poor soul coming in to visit. <laughs> you can see those little streaks in the sky, and then make your way to the landing pads, which are even further in. Even though they're from the outside, unless you're l somehow landing here. They are pretty far in, so to speak, getting past multiple checkpoints of some people. But if you're in a vehicle, all of a sudden, all these uh, characters with small arms aren't that big of a deal. You can just drive right past them. Now, they, CIG, cover your ears because I don't want you to get ideas. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if, if they had, like, rail guns or something on the outside, that would be problematic. Or ground-based turrets that function correctly, that would be a problem. But I don't know. I don't want to make it too hard. I think it's already going to be pretty dang challenging when the, all these characters here are actually fighting you actively and you're trying to do a mission. Like, you need, like, because the mission isn't going to let you just pick up a crate, like, on the outside and walk and drive away or walk away with it. It's, if it's a nefarious mission, it's going to be deep in here somewhere. Note these are, like, kind of set up for PvP and PvE at the same time. You have, like, these blocks that allow you to hide a lot. I kind of had Fallout and Division vibes when I was in here mainly fallout uh especially outside when you come up with that brand new fauna that's just and how it's all rendered out new it's it's just beautiful so the area in general is a win uh cargo containers are here to stay speaking of cargo in general the new gear storage stations are in and technically you can use them but they're kind of clunky the way they work so there's like these little 
take pick up drop off bins that are going to replace your global inventory in the future. And these stations are everywhere. When we heard it in one of the official public official videos by CIG that they were going to place these things everywhere because they had to, I, I was like, yeah, sure. But yeah, I mean, there's like three more on your left there. There's just insane amounts of these. They're inside where your half spawn. They're inside uh, where uh, you go to shop. They're inside where you go to pick up your ship. They're literally off the elevators on the station's um, locations. And they seem to color match the area they're in. It's kind of neat. So uh, they're really uh, going to become ubiquitous uh, for a lot of people's activities. And uh, all players are going to have to go through this system. And they're not just at the spaceports. So just to be clear, they're also in the other locations too. Like I mentioned already, this is how it looks in the Habs. It's kind of like just buried on the right there. Um, you know, I literally was fiddling with items because I didn't even notice them because of the new the new radial menu I wanted to play with. But uh, right to the right here is your gear storage. And uh, so literally you can spawn in and handle this and go in. And I am certain that when hangers are in, uh, persistent hangers are in, you will have these gear storage stations as well inside your hangar. Uh, it goes without saying. It might be modified because it's using the cargo elevator probably, but it, I think for smaller items, it would make sense for them to just have this drop in. You know, a certain size item can come through this. Bigger items, well, they got to come through the cargo elevator. Could look, a giant ship module is not going to fit through that little tiny port on the bottom of that system. But uh, that's how the uh, system works and operates. And I, I think I'm going to go into overtime now. So for the rest of this, I'm just going to kind of dig into a little bit of 3.23 goodness. Uh, if you're interested in uh, the UI and a few other things that I've noticed in these early builds of 3.23. Of course, I'm going to cover them in more in depth. But uh, these are more for those type of folks speeds. So the new ui is wild uh, so you have this new mini map system where you can really see every single door that opens and closes um, in some cases you can see elevators flying through on stations but in this case this is the spawn habs the cloud view rest at orison and it's just me kind of fiddling with the map trying to see how it works that wherever that crosshair is you can place a beacon so you can literally set a position hey meet me here and then in the future you'll be able to share that with other people and you can save locations you can make markers and such and um this is the future right here many players have been complaining about not being able to set markers not being able to set you know waypoint locations for the future and um for those who've played eve you know you think of your your safe spots your favorite safe spots or hopefully being able to share these uh so that way you can take that joint spot and make it like a place that you can all meet up for fleets and such or safe location if the mining operation gets messed up or something um so there's uh there's a few things i think that are very valuable but at the basic level you can set waypoints if you don't like the pathing and signage that's already in this in the in, in, in the larger planetary landing locations and make it more comfortable for yourself you can see the contract system you can see comms uh the new chat by the way on the smaller menu when you're when you're just looking around is fantastic the fact you can see the degrees that you're facing is pretty useful especially when you're inside atmo at, on a planet you can see if you're looking which direction. And that's all nice and useful stuff. Um, there's a few things that um, my my mouse cursor on this build, which was last night, I kind of died. <laughs> so this was kind of a challenge to uh, to locate some things. But in general, you can see the small 3D HUD in the top left. Uh, when you go into advanced camera mode, it's like normal. It's is what it is. I feel like a lot of things look different now. When you go to shop, you can see the, the what's called the physical merchandise systems. Um, on some things, I got it to pop up. On other things, it just seemed like it was just using the new F key system without the extra little mentions. Um, and they just shoved, I want to just note again, they shoved the gear storage system in every which way they possibly could. 
it is really, really built out. And I think that's a good thing. I think players, you know, they don't even know yet that they're going to complain about it. <laughs> so being able to have the gear accessible in different places. There's like the physical inventory system popping up a little bit for like these hot dogs and for the burritos and stuff. But that's an example of the little cards that you build and then you hold down F to purchase things. Um, I noticed sometimes it took some time due to server lag. There's the gear storage in the background, by the way. So when you go in the Kelto, it's on the right, like a hard right. As soon as you come into the store, you hang a right. Um, it's on that wall, like the wall behind me. Uh, there's not, but anyway, that's the uh, the gear storage system over in the corner. This is the uh, kiosk to work the store, and the server was lagging pretty bad by this point. But I did want to note those things and just kind of show you a little hint of the quality of life changes coming up in 3.23. And remember, once again. This is EPTU Wave 1, not un, not under NDA. This is not just EVO. Um, this, this is allowed to show, and I'm just trying to show you some of the content. I hope other waves come up very quickly. As soon as your wave's up, please be sure to join the EPTU, or if it's on the PTU in the future, I'll be sure to note that in my videos uh, as we continue to track through uh, this time period. We're in an exciting kind of change here where uh, there's a lot of energy in the, in the community. There's a lot of energy in, in, in this in this in general. And I, I really look forward to uh, seeing where we go in the 3.23 patch cycle. I feel that there's going to be a 3.23 and a 3.231, especially if they're trying to somehow... I don't know if it's possible, but uh, there's some people talking like they think they're, this is going to get pushed out for, um, for ILW. Uh, so they're talking about like trying to do 3.23 live in May. And the only way that's going to happen is if some of the features are kind of get a haircut in, in this, this mod, this mode and just say, look, we'll do a 3.23.1 after ILW. That's my random opinion. That's completely uninformed. And, uh, that's kind of my feelings, but it's shaping up very interesting. Lots of major changes for quality of life, some very cool new locations, and more to come soon. There's already EVA testing and water physics testing, but this is what I had so far uh, over two nights off and on of, uh, of doing some flights. Thank you to my long-term subscribers. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Fly safe.